having too much fun here tonight. Amen. Praise God forever. The book of Numbers, chapter 25. Reading recently about a little lady by the name of May Lee, just turning 99 years old. She's been working now for the state of California for 76 years and still drives her own vehicle every morning. Pito po tanim na taon na po siya nagtatrabaho sa State of California at sa mismo ang nagmamaneho pagpasok sa trabaho kada umaga. Someone asked this little lady, what is the key to longevity in life? Pero po nagtanong sa baba, sa matandang ito, ano ang susi, bakit mahaba ang buhay mo? She said, if you keep busy, you will enjoy life. Ang sabi niya, kung pananatili mong ikaw ay abala, masisihan ka sa buhay. And this has been Pastor Mitchell's Philosophy for many years. At ito rin po ang pilosopiya ni Pastor Mitchell sa loob po ng maraming taon. He said the key to longevity in the ministry is to stay engaged. Sabi niya, ang susi upang manatili sa ministeryo ay yung lagi kang abala, aktibo. I want to preach tonight on one of the dangers of life and that's the danger of boredom. At ay sa mga rin patungkol sa isa sa panganib ng buhay at ito yung panganib ng pagkabangot o pagkainip. How many here tonight have teenagers? Sino po rito may mga kabataan sa inyong mga bahay? Kabataan. How many ever, ever had teenagers? Sino po yung na, mga kabataan? One well, of the things that teenagers say is, I'm bored. Madalas po yung sinasabi so, ng kabataan. I'm so bored. Ako'y napapagod. Bagot na bagot. <laughs> Boredom is, I believe, one of the fathers of all sin. Ang pagkabagot, ang paniwala niya, isa ito sa ama ng maraming kasalanan. Here in the book of Numbers, chapter 25. Sa bilang kapitulo 25. Numbers 25. I'm just going to read it, jump around, verses 1 to 3. Talatang uno hanggang 3 lang muna. And then moving down to verse number 6. Now, Israel remained in Acacia Grove. And the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to ba Baal of Peor. And the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Verse number 6. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of Medan. Now when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he arose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust them, both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel and those who died in the plague were 24,000. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal among them so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. Therefore, say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and to his descendants after him a covenant of everlasting priesthood, priesthood because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. The dangers tonight of boredom. Father, I'm asking for the anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage. Anoint these lips of clay. I have no confidence in the flesh. Let us see no man save Jesus tonight. And I'll be careful to give you the praise and glory in Jesus' wonderful name. And all of God's people shouted, Amen. amen. And Amen. The sin that caused the judgment of God to fall upon Sodom is often assumed to be the sin of immorality. Ang dahilan po ng uh, pagdating uh, ng paghatol sa lugar ng Sodom 
ay itong iniisip na kasalanan na pagsamba sa Diyos Diyosan. And according to the book of Genesis, that assumption would be correct. At tayo po sa aklat ng Genesis, itong palagin ito ay maaaring totoo. However, Ezekiel the prophet reveals the doorway to sin. Ngunit ito si Propeta Ezekiel ay kanya pong uh, inihayag ang pintuan ng kasalanan. In Ezekiel 16 and verse 49, behold this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. Narito ito ang kasama ng iyong kapatid na babae na Sodoma, kapalaluan, kayamuan sa tinapay, at ang malabi sa kapahingahan ay nasa kanya at sa kanyang mga anak na babae, at hindi man niya pinalagas ang kamay ng dukha at mapagkailangan. So Ezekiel reveals the doorway. Kaya inihayag po ni Ezekiel ang pintuan. And the doorway to the sin of immorality was the abundance of idleness. At ang uh, daan ng pintuan patungkol sa pagsamba sa Diyos Diyosan ay ang kasaganaan ng kawalang ginagawa. In modern day vernacular, it would be boredom. Sa pangkasalukuyang pananilita, ang tawag po rito ay pagkabagot o pagkainip. I want to say tonight that being bored isn't necessarily a sin. Sasabihin natin yung ikaw ay mainip, hindi po naman taas ang matatawag na kasalanan. But it will open the door to the lure of sin. Ngunit ito po magbubukas ang pintuan sa, sa patibog ng kasalanan. Now David said of old that through affliction God brought me into the net. Kaya sinabi ni David sa pamamagitan ng mga kahirapan, ito nagatid sa akin doon sa silo, sa salambat. When are Christians most tempted to sin? Kailan ba nahulog sa pagkakasalang kristyano? When everything is going wrong around them now. Kapag ka ba ang lahat ng bagay hindi magandang nangyayari? Hindi. When finances are not good. Pagka ba gipit sa pananalapi? When they are struggling with physical sickness or disease. Kapag ka sila ba ay meron mga problema sa katawan o meron silang karamdaman? When they're struggling with relationships. Pag meron ba silang problema sa kanilang kapwa? No, the answer is none of the above. Ang sagot wala po sa mga binanggit. It's when we are bored in life. Ito ay kapag ka ikaw ay nababagod sa buhay. We become bored in life with idleness. Tayo po'y nababagot sa buhay kapag ka wala tayong ginagawa. Boredom tonight has been defined the state of being weary and restless through the lack of interest. Ang pagkabagot, ang pagpapaliwanag, ito po yung kalagayan na ikaw ay uh, hindi mapakali at ikaw ay nangihina. How many have ever preached on a Sunday morning service and the entire church looked bored? Sino po nakaranasan mo, nangarag ka linggo na umaga, yung lahat ng mga mana ng palataya, bagot na bagot. You're spitting six rows when you preach. Dumudura ka na hanggang anit na upuan sa lakas ng iyong pangangaral. You're high jumping the altar. Dumulundag ka pa. And the more anointing I feel, the more I sweat through my shoes. At lalong nadadama mo yung pagpahit, pinagpapawisan ka, abot hanggang sa iyong sapatos. And you look over the audience and it's just one collective yawn. At habang tinitingnan mo, ang iyong tagapakinig, lahat nakahikap. This is a audio-visual generation. Itong panahong ito ay mahilig sa nakikita at naririnig. Today you have to have a trained dog act, movies about God. You have to bring in entertainment. Ngayon, kinakit lang meron mong asong turuan, meron pa silang papanoorin, at meron pa silang mga palabas na makikita. But whatever happened to just coming to hear the preaching of the Word of God. Ano na nangyari doon sa ikaw ay dumating lamang para makapakinig ng pangangaral? Boredom usually results when we are between two things. Ang pagkabagot ay nangyayari kapag ka ikaw ay nasa gitna ng dalawang bagay. And the two things is the problem and the answer. At ang uh, dalawang bagay ay yung problema at yung kasagutan. It's a period of time that we call waiting. Ito yung panahon na kung tawagin natin ay paghihintay. It's during the waiting times that we find ourselves restless when we're inactive. Ito yung mga panahon na ikaw ay nasa paghihintay. Ito yung mga panahon na hindi ka mapakali. Someone said an idle mind is the devil's workshop. May nakapagsabi, ang isipang walang ginagawa, dyan nagpapanday si satanas. Now we hate that word wait. 
Ayaw na ayaw natin na naghihintay. And we, but we do say it in church and, oh. I, and they can get very dramatic. Pero minsan pinapanood natin mga kapatid sa simbahan, inaawit nila ito at minsan damang-dama pa nila. They that wait Sim upon the Lord. And you can see the crowd moving. I mean, they're singing it with such enthusiasm. Silang naghihintay sa Panginoon. Tamang dama yung awitin. But I pastor these people and they don't wait for anything. I want patience and I want it right now. This is the microwave generation. Instant tea, instant rice. Instant kape, instant tagarin. But how many know revival is not always instant? The Bible said through faith and patience we inherit the promises of God. And I've come to declare tonight that we have 7,000 7, promises in this book. And if God spoke it, He will bring it to pass. Let every man and let every devil be a liar. But let God's word be true. God can be trusted tonight. So let's talk about boredom's and seduction. Tingnan po natin yung pang-angit ng pagkamagod sa bayan po ng Israel that idle people are habitations for demons. Na ito po mga taong walang ginagawa, sila po yung pinananahanan ng masamang espiritu. Now, I can preach this with some authority. Kaya niyang mga relito na may kapamalan because the chief sin of the islands is boredom. Sa pagkatapang unahing kasalanan ng mga taga-isla ay ang pagkabagot. It's the state of being weary and restless through the lack of interest. Ito po yung kalagayan na kawalan ng gana, kawalan ng interes at uh, nangihina. I've preached and they're, I'm running back and forth and it's like they're watching a tennis match. At kung mga aras siya, takbo, parot pa rito na. Yung mga tao, wala lang, para lang nanonood ng tennis match. And at the end of the service, I, I said a great miracle took place tonight. At uh, pagkatas ang gawa, sabi niya, meron takilang iba lang nangyari. And I could see the mystified look on their face. What miracle? At uh, yung mga tao, nakanganga lang, ano sinasabi nito? I said, you're the only church I've ever preached to that could turn your head all the way around without moving your shoulders. Sabi niya, kayo lang ang simba. Na, na, na kaya niyong gawin na yung inyong ulo lang ang pumipit na hindi gumagalaw ang mga balikat I preached on Moses one night and a woman walked up to me she said well you don't look like Moses to me nang araw sa patungkol sa paksa ni Moises isang matanda babae lumapit sa kanya hindi ka naman mukhang si Moises I said well you don't look like the children of Israel either but I'm gonna keep on preaching ay di ka rin naman ang kamukha ng anak na Israel pero patuloy ako mga ngaral the blahs, the doldrums, listlessness. Yung walang katuturan, yung katamlayan, yung kawalang bahala. Lethargy, apathy, indifference. Hindi mapagali, paulit-ulit lang, malamlam. That is the spirit of our age. Ito po yung spirito ng ating panahon. And this generation views all work as something bad. At ang tingin ng panahon natin ito sa paggawa ay masama. Adam was industrious before the curse. The Bible said that Adam tended the garden. He tended and he kept the garden. It means that he cultivated and guarded it. But today we have a bad attitude toward work. Because we want instant gratification. The Apostle Paul said, "If you don't work, then you don't eat." Sabi ni Pablo, kung hindi ka magtatrabaho, hindi ka dapat kumakain. Paul is dealing with an island attitude. Kaya nga kinakaharap nito ni Pablo ang kaisipan ng mga taga-isla. He writes in his letter to Titus in Titus chapter one and verse number twelve. Sa mula sa kaya tito sa tito sa uno dosen. One of them, a prophet of their own, said Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. Sinabi ng isa sa kanila rin na isang propetang sarili nila, 
Ang mga taga-Kreta, kailan pa man ay mga sinungaling, masasamang hayop, matatakaw na mga tamad. In verse 13, this testimony is true. Ang talatang 13, ang patutong ito ay tunay. Therefore, rebuke them sharply. Dahil dito yung sabay mong may kabagsikan sila. And I can tell you, after being in the islands for 16 years again, some things never change. At masasabi niya sa iyo, sa loob ng labing-anim na taon, na sa'y nakatira sa isla, may mga bagay talagang hindi pa rin nagbabago. So what does that have to do with us? Ano naman kinalaman nyo sa atin ngayon? Israel rarely got into trouble when it was traveling with God. Bihira pong magkaroon ng problema ang bayan ng Israel pag sila'y naglalakbay kasama ang Diyos. Only God can air condition a desert. Tanging Diyos lamang ang kaya magpalamig ng isang buong disyerto. A matter of fact, he gave them central air and central heat. Katunayan, pangkalahat ang lamig, pangkalahat ang ding init. He fed them 340 boxcar loads of manna every day. Pinakain niya ng 340 punong-punong truck ng manna kada araw. A rock took up legs and walked with them through the wilderness, belching out multiplied thousands of gallons of water. Yung bato, biglang nagkaroon ng paa, sumusunod sa kala, bumubuga ng galo, libo-libong galo ng mga tubig. Their shoes grew on their feet. Ang kalang sapatos, dumikita sa paa. Moses is 120 years of age and has no cataracts. Si Moises, edad, isang dan at dalawampung taon, hindi nagkaroon ng katarata. Look at the church today, we're 40 years old, going on 90. Pero tingnan mo, ang marami si Banyon, edad 40, pero kung tingnan mo, mukha ang 90 na. And the wrong question to ask some people is, how are you doing? At ang maling tanong, wag mo itatanong, kumusta ka na? Do you have two and a half hours for me to tell you how bad things really are? Meron ka bang dalawat ka lahat yung oras para kwento ko sa iyo kung gano'ng kasama ang araw ko? Jesus' greatest temptation ang pinakamalaking tukso ng Jesus came when He was waiting in the wilderness. Ay nangyari nang siya naghihintay doon sa ilang. Lot's greatest temptation ang pinakamalaking tukso na nangyari kay Lot came when he settled in Sodom and Gomorrah. Ay dumating nang siya'y tumahan sa Sodom at Gomorrah. Lot became bored. Si Lot ay nabagot. David's greatest temptation came on one occasion. Ang pinakamalaking tukso na dumating sa buhay ni David. When he stayed home rather than be out fighting with his troops. Nang siya'y nanatili sa kanyang bahay sa lip na kasama siya ng hukbo at nakikipagbaka. Elijah faced bravely the prophets of Baal. But afterward, he's fleeing in the wilderness. While he's waiting, he becomes bored. And he's tempted to quit. At uh, nagkaroon siya ng pagnanay sa sumuko. Israel 40 years earlier had been waiting for Moses on Mount Sinai. Bago dumating apat na pong taon ng bayan ng Israel ay naghihintay sa bundok ng Sinai. It committed sin. They got bored waiting for Moses to return. Ito'y nagkasala habang inihintay nila si Moses na magbalik. And so the Bible gives us a case history. Kaya ang Bible nagbigay sa atin ng mga sunod-sunod na kaso ng kasaysayan. 1 Samuel 13, Saul got bored waiting for Samuel. Unang Samuel si Saul ay uh, na, nainip sa paghintay kay Samuel. So he offered up sacrifices. Listen, kaya Saul sa, is a king, he's not a priest. Kaya sa nalang gumawa ng pag-andog, tandaan natin si Saul ay hari, hindi naman siya saserdote. Look at our text tonight. Tingnan po natin yung text natin ngayon. This story follows on the heels of an incident where King Balak hired Balaam to curse Israel. Ito pong kwentong ito'y kasunod lamang nang itong si Haring uh, ba Balak ay uh, gusto niyang sumpain ng bayan ng Israel. And the attempt failed. At ang uh, kanyang pagtatangka ay nabigo. And I've come to declare to you tonight that no witchcraft nor enchantment or sorcery can be used against Israel. At sa'y naparito upang ipahayag sa atin na namang panggagaway, namang pangkukulam ay mananahig laban sa Israel. Although Balaam failed to curse Israel, bagamat nabigo si Balaam na sumpay ng Israel, he shared how Israel could still be hurt. Kung paano masaktan itong Israel. Let the women dance. Pasayawin, pasayawin mo yung mga babae. And by appealing to their sinful flesh, at sa paghikayat sa lang lamang makasalanan, they would sin on their own 
without having to curse them. Sila sa kalang sarili magkakasala, hindi mo na kailang sumpain pa sila. So look secondly this evening at boredom's stubbornness. Tingnan naman natin ang tinatawag na katigasan ng pagkabagot. Because Israel's problem was not knowing right from wrong. Sa pagkat ang problem ng Israel hindi yung uh, malaman yung mali sa tama. It was a failure to do what was right from wrong. Ito ay yung kabiguan na gawin yung tama mula sa mali. This is often the basis of sin today. Ito po madalas ang pinapangunahing nga uh, uh, dahilan sa pagkakasala. It's not ignorance of knowing what is right and wrong. Hindi po yung kawalang kaalaman sa mali at tama. But our choosing to do wrong. Ngunit yung ating pagpapasya na gawin yung mali. Now, I want to tell you that sin has consequences. It's nice kung sabihin sa iyo ang kasalanan na meron pong kabayaran. We later learned that 24,000 men died in this plague. At napagalaman natin na 24,000 mga lalaki na matay sa salot na ito. Now that beats the death toll of Korah's rebellion. Dinagpan po nito yung bilang na namatay sa pagre-rebelde ni Korah. In Korah's rebellion, 14,700 died. Sapagat sa pagre-rebelde ni Korah, 24,700 ang nagkandamatay. The reason why this happened is because Moses did not judge the leaders for their failure to lead. Ang dahilan sa pagat hindi po hinatula ni Moses ang mga tagapanguna sa kabiguan nilang manguna. Can I tell you that sin is a killer? Pwede bang sabihin ko sa iyo ang kasalanan ay pumapatay? And sin is a very serious proposition. At ang kasalanan ay isang mabigat na bagay. You say tonight, how serious is sin? O gano'n ba talaga kabigat ang kasalanan? God's only begotten son had to die for our sin. Isipin mo, ang bugtong na anak ng Diyos ay kinakailang mamatay para sa ating kasalanan. And I've got the remedy tonight and that remedy is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. At taglay natin ang gamot, walang iba kundi ang banal na dugo ng ating Panginoon. This last service in Guam, we sang power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Ito nakaranggawa nila sa Guam, ginamit nila yung there's power, wonder-working power in the blood. I mean, believe there's still power in the blood of Jesus. Sino naniniwala, meron pa rin po kang pangirin ang dugo ni Jesus. You look at our text tonight. Kaya tingnan po natin ating text yung ngayong gabi. And the Bible said it gets worse because of a cold-blooded rebellion against God. At ang sabi ng Biblia, lalo po itong lumala sapagat meron mas mabigat na pag-suway sa Diyos. Notice verse number six. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented his brethren, a Midianite woman, in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. At narito, isa sa mga anak ni Israel ay naparoon at nagdala sa kanya mga kapatid ng isang babae magjanita sa panig ni Moses. At sa paningin ng buong kapisana ng mga anak ni Israel, samantalang sila umiiyak sa pintuan ng tabernakulo ng kapisana. Now this is a total disregard for God. Ito po isang lantara na pagsuway o pagbabaliwala sa Diyos. A disregard for the word of God. Pagbabaliwala sa salita ng Diyos. This Jewish man brings back into camp a Midianite woman. Ito po ang lalaking Hudyo ay nagdala ng isang madyanitang babae sa kanilang kampamento. He is flaunting his sin. Kanya pong ipinangangalandakan pa ang kanyang kasalanan. Some things never change. Pero kasi mga bagay na hindi talaga yung babaro. People today, they flaunt their sin. Ang mga tao ngayon, kanilang ipinagmamalaki pa ang kanilang kasalanan. They dare God to kill them. Kanilang hinahamon pa ang Diyos sa sila'y patayin. But I want to tell you tonight that God did not get converted between Malachi and Matthew. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Pero sinasabi niya sa iyo, ang Diyos ay hindi po nagbabago mula sa Malakias at Mateo. Siyang noon, siyang ngayon, at siyang magpakailanman. 24,000 people are killed in this plague. 24,000 mga tao ang nagkandamatay sa salot na to. And while the people were weeping over the deaths of so many, at habang ang mga tao ay nagdurus at umiyak sa pagkamatay ng napakarami, even in the midst of God's discipline, this man mocks God by bringing this woman into the camp. Tinuya ng lalaki ito ang Dios sa pagdadala na isang majanitang babae. But she is so cute. Ayaw lang siya siya kasi napaka cute. Pastor, we are in lust. I mean, love. Pastor, kami po ay nagmamahalan. He is such a hunk. Siya po ay matikas. Yeah, and he is a Philistine. Oo nga, ay kaya lang Pilisteo yan. 
God said, I want God's people to stay away from those Philistine men. At ang sabi ng Diyos, ang gusto ko yung mga kababayan ay lumayo sa mga lalaking Pilisteo. And immorality comes right into the church today. Pumapasok tuloy ang immoralidad sa maraming simbahan ngayon. And people are afraid to judge it. At ang mga tao umiiwas sa ito'y hatulan. I've seen them waltz right into church, waltz right into the church. Nakikita niya, pumapasok na kabrisyete pa, papasok na simbahan. Trying to seduce half the men in my church. At yung uh, mga kababayan, gusto ang tuksuhin yung mga kalahati ng bilang ng kalalakihan sa loob ng simbahan. I said, you, you got into those pants in one of two ways. Nakapasok ka niya sa pantalong yan, isa o dalawang bagay. They are so tight, you so, must have jumped off a two-story building to get into them. <laughs> Sobrang hingpit niyan, siguro lumuntog ka sa dalawang palapag na gusali para makalusot ka lang dyan. Or you painted them on one or the other. O kaya, ipinintura mo lang yan, alin sa dalawa. But you're gonna wiggle, wiggle right out the door. Pero, tapos pakiwal-kiwal ka, papasok sa tindahan. And you're gonna dress like a real Christian. Tapos magbibis ka, dapat ang isang totoong Kristiyano. Are you with me? Naunawa lang po ba natin? They shouldn't be going to the altar with short, short skirts. Hindi po dapat sila tumutugon sa altar na meron pong napakaigsing palda. You're not talking about the one that has the split all the way up the side? Ang tinutukoy natin yung merong hiwa hanggang dito. Where you can see, you can see all the way to San Jose, California? Na tanaw na tanaw mo na yung General Santos. I believe in holiness. Naniniwala tayo sa kabanan. I believe in sanctification. Naniniwala tayo sa kalinisan. Sinners are going to dress like sinners. Ang mga makasalanan, normal sa kalang magdamit ng ma hindi maganda. You have to catch the fish before you clean the fish. Inakailang huli mo muna isda bago mo malinis. But if you claim to be saved, pero kung sinasabi mo ligtas ka, and filled with the Holy Ghost, at puspus ka ng Espiritu Santo, then God's going to give you some discretion about the way you carry yourself. Kung ganun, Ganon, bibigyan ka ng Diyos ng kayusan kung paano ka manamit at dalhin mo ang iyong sarili. The temptation of gluttony had encouraged the temptation of sexual immorality. Kaya yung pong tukso ng katakawan ang nagbunsod sa tukso ng immoralidad. This man ignored the principle of Scripture. Pinaliwala po ng lalangi ito ang prinsipyo ng kasulatan. And the principle of Scripture is be sure that your sins will find you out. At ang prinsipyo ng kasulatan, tiyak ito, aabutin ka ng iyong mga kasalanan. The unchallenged sins by the leaders kaya yung mga kasalanan na hindi po inampronta ng mga tagapanguna had now shown the level of arrogance to sin by the people. Ay nagpakita na ng uh, kapalaluan sa gitna ng mga tao. Like leader, like people. Kung paano yung mga tao, malamang ganun din yung leader. I mean, we believe some things here. Sino po naniniwala? Meron tayong mga papakaya. How many believe that you can live clean in this generation? Sino po naniniwala? Pwede ka mamuhay na may kalinisan sa ating panahon. As soon as I land in Manila, it won't be 10 minutes till you start seeing the billboards propping up. At hindi pa natatagalan sa paglapag niya dito sa Manila, makikita ninyo ang mga naglalaki ang billboard. Hardly a week goes by that I don't have to deal with the fallout of pornography on my telephone. Walang hindi lalampas ang isang linggo, meron laging mga bagay na mapornografiya sa kanyang telepono. You can read about the sin of Baal Peor. Makikita mo ang problema, ang kasalanan ni Baal Peor. And you'll find 50 years later and they're still dealing with the fallout from this sin. At makikita mo, pagkalipas sa limampung taon, yung kinahulugan nilang kasalanan, yun pa rin. I believe we can be a shining example to this generation. Ako yung naniniwala, pwede tayo maging isang maliwanag na halimbawa sa ating kapanahonan. Can you say amen? Amen po ba? Oh look, lastly, and some of you are saying, thank God. Hina po natin ang katapusan at ang sabi ng iba sa inyo, dagang salamat sa ginoo. And that's boredom's solution. At ito yung solusyon sa pagkabagot. And the answer to boredom tonight. At ang sagot sa pagkabagot, buong puso. I love this story. Gustong gusto niya yung kwento. Because this is the grandson of Aaron, the high priest. Sapagat ito po ang apo ni Aaron na saserdote. Phineas is one of my heroes in the Bible. Si Phineas ang isa na itinuturing yung bayani sa Biblia. Now I don't know what bad looks like, but I think if you looked up bad in the Webster's Dictionary, you would see a picture of Phineas. Hindi niya alam kung ano ba ang larawan ng asting sa Biblia, pero siguro ito yung larawan ni Phineas astigin. He is so angry. Sa pagalit-galit. 
at the flagrant nature of this sin. Sa lantarang pagpapakita ng kasalanan. He runs and gets a spear. Kaya si tumakbo at gumawa sa ng sibat. And when he returns, at ang siya nagbalik, he thrust the spear through the man and the woman while they're in the very act. Kanyang pinalagpasan ang lalaki at babae habang sila'y abala. Thrusting the spear through their bodies and in the Hebrew language, the Bible says, through her stomach. Pinalagpasan niya ng kanyang sibat at ang sabi ng Biblia, kanyang pinalampas ito doon sa kanyang tiyan. In other words, near the area of the body of the womb. Sa ibang salita, malapit sa bahagi ng sinapupunan. So why would God do that? Bakit gagawin ng Diyos ang ganun? Because it's a message against the fertility God of Baal. Sapagat ito'y mensahe laban sa tinatawag na fertilidad nitong si Baal. And now the Bible says that Phineas is being praised by God. At ngayon ang sabi ng Biblia, si Phineas ay pinuri ng Diyos. Sometimes you have to judge your own children. Pag minsan kinakailang hatulan mo ang sarili mong mga anak. You're not going to fornicate in this church. Hindi mo pwedeng gawin yan dito sa lubdang simbahan. I've told my kids, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. Sinabi niya sa kanya mga anak, ako ang nagluwal sa inyo, pwede ko kung kayong alisin sa mundong ito. And after I take you out, I'll make another one just like you. At pagkatapos ko kayong dispatcha, gagawa ako ng bago katulad mo lang. Now they didn't fully understand all that that meant, but they knew it meant violence. Hindi nila ganap na naintindihan ng buong kaulugan, pero isang bagay, alam nila karasan. Did you have a dad like my dad, old school? Meron ba kayong tatay na katulad ng kanyang tatay, makalugan? Amen. Amen. You know what he told me one time? Alam ba sinabi sa kanya minsan? He said, "I will slap the white off of you." Palalabas ng puti sa mata mo. I will slap the white off of you. Palalabas ng puti sa mata mo. My mother said, "I'll slap you into the middle of next week." Sabi na kanya na na isa sa pigay kita. Sa kaligitan, sa susunod na linggo. I came home in the middle of the night, about 2 o'clock in the morning. Mawig siya, alas dos sa madaling araw. I was high and I was sneaking up the stairway. Siya ay merong tama at siya ay dahan-dahang bakit sa agdanan. And ran into my dad's chest. At yun, natapakan niya yung dibdib ng tatay niya. Hi. Ay! And I had forgotten to mow the lawn. At nakalimutan niyang gupitin yung damo sa kanyang pangurat. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, he turned the flood lamps on outside. And I mowed the lawn at 2 o'clock in the morning. Kaya alas do sa madaling araw, binuhay ng tatay niya ang ilaw at ayun, ando siya nagtatabas. Because in the mind of God and the mind of my dad, it was already done. Sapagkat sa kaisipan ng Diyos at akala ng tatay niya, nagawa na niya, tapos na. Thank God for that. Salamat sa Diyos sa mga tatay. Oh, how many times he kicked me out of the house. Oh, ilang beses ang tinadya kang palabas sa kanyang bahay. And mama is in the front yard. At ang nanay niya, nakabang na doon sa pintuan para sa isaluin. But at 39 years of age, he got saved. Ngunit sa dad at 39 na naligtas. Same weekend. Nung linggong yun din, my mother got saved. Ang nanay naman yung sumunod. They quit fighting in the house. At nawala niyang pagtatalo sa bahay. They poured all the liquor out of the house. Itinapon na yung mga alak sa bahay. My dad gave two cartons of cigarettes to his brother so he could die of cancer. Pinigay naman ng tatay niya yung dalawang karton ng sigarilyo sa kanyang kapatid para siya matoda sa kanser. That's conversion. Yun ang totoo. Let me tell you what the Jesus movement is. I wish I could wrap this thing up. I wish I could wrap it. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what the the Jesus movement is. Alam mo ba kung ano ibig sabihin ng pagkilos ng ating pagkilos? You get saved. Kaya maligtas. Baptized in water. Baptized mas sa tubig. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Baptized mas sa Espiritu Santo. Get married and have babies in that order. Makapag-asawa at mga anak sa ganong kayusan. That's the Jesus movement. Yan ang tinatawag na kilusan ng ating Panginoon. And if God did nothing else for me in my life, He did something about my morals. At kung meron mang anumang bagay na ginawa ang Diyos sa kanyang buhay, ito'y may kinalaman sa kanyang moralidad. Oh, but you're so pokey. 
you're so handsome. Stop. Frank's getting jealous. Oh, I love Phineas. The so good son of Phineas. Phineas is not even a leader yet. Hindi pa nga tagapanguna si Phineas. I want you to think about this. Si Pinyo to. He's not a leader yet. Hindi pa siya tagapanguna. He wasn't afraid to take a stand. Pero hindi siya takot manindigan. At this point, he's not a leader. Sa puntong ito, hindi pa siya leader. He did so because he was angry at the lax attitude and the tolerating of sin in the camp. Galit siya dahil sa nakita niyang maluag na pagtrato at pagpayag sa kasalanan. He wasn't afraid to take a stand for what was godly. Hindi po siya natakot na manindigan kung ano ang makajos. This is the heart of the righteous. Ito po ang puso ng matuwid. To stand for what's right no matter what. Na manindigan para sa tama ano man ang mangyari. He wasn't a politician. Hindi po siya isang politiko. That's the reason why I love my president. Yan ang gusto ko ba? Yan ang dela ko bakit gusto niya ang kanyang pagulo. Because he is not a politician. Sapagkat hindi siya isang politiko. Oh, how refreshing it is. Oh, nakakasariwa naman yan. Not to have a professional politician. Na hindi ka magkaroon ng isang professional na politiko. And I tell you, I get sick and tired of political pastors. At alam mo ba, siya'y sawang-sawa na sa mga pastor na politiko. I don't take a vote what I'm going to preach. Hindi ako humingi ng boto kung ano bang aking papangaral. If I would have taken a vote last Sunday morning, Morning, it would have been 615 to one. Kung nahingi sa ng boto nung nakarang linggo kung ano papangaral niya, bakakani na dan limang po ang kontra isalang ang pabor. Aren't you glad Moses didn't take a vote? Hindi ba kayo natutuwa si Moses hindi sa mingi ng boto? It would have been three million to one, and he would still be paddling over tonight in a canoe. Bakak kung haanap sa ng boto tatlong million laban lang sa isa pero magpapatuli pa rin siya sa pag buksay ng baruto. He said, "This is what we're going to do." Follow me. Kaya ang sabi ang ganito ng gagawin natin. Sumunod kayo. And the rest of you can stay with the Egyptians. At yung sa inyo ay bahala ka sa buhay niyo. Diyan kayo sa mga Egyptiano. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad for salvation tonight. Tayo po ay papasalamat sa kaligtasan ngayong gabi. Righteousness is not just a creed. Ang katwiran hindi lamang po ito isang panata o It's not just a truth to be practiced. Now, this one act saved thousands. He pulls out that javelin and spears them. Kinuha niya yung sibat at kanyang tinuhok sila. And God looks out of heaven and says, "At ang Dios tumingin sa langit at." I like that. Yes. That's the God I serve. The God of America is a weak, effeminate. A waffling God. The God of the Bible is Let your yea be yea, and let your nay be nay. Mula ng Dios ang Biblia ang yung o ay maging o at ang yung hindi ay maging hindi. The God of the Bible says you're either male or female. Ang Dios ang Biblia babae ka babae ka yun lang. You see, I was a male trapped inside of a female body. Okay, ako kasi isang lalaki na naipit sa katawan ng isang babae. You didn't know that for nine months I was trapped inside of a female body, but I got out. Hindi mo alam yun. Pero sa loob ng isang babae na ako na kulog pero ako na kalaya. And the doctor hit me on the backside, and I cried. At pinalo ako ng doktor sa kapitan na tawo imiya. And I saw a bright light. At nakakita ako na liwanag. And it was a personal experience. At ito isang personal na karanasan. I may be confused about lots of things. Maari ako na lilito sa maraming bagay. But I'm not confused about my gender. Pero hindi ako na lilito sa akin na sariyan. In a generation where preachers are confused about their gender. Sa isang generasyon na maging mga mangaral na lilito sa kanilang sariling kasarian. Effeminate preachers, effeminate song leaders. Mga binabay, mga mangaral, mga bayot, at mga tagapagpaawit. In the Philippines and in America. Kaya sa Pilipinas, pag isa Amerika. Amen. Amen. Their hair is tinted. Ang kanilang buhok ay may kulay. Wearing skinny jeans. Digit na digit ang pantalon. And putting on Christian tattoos. At pero mga tattoo na malak Christian daw. John three sixteen. What? What does it say? When the mark 
marking of the body is a sign of bondage. Ang pagtatato sa katawan ay palatanda ng pagkaalipin. Hallelujah. Thank God for salvation. Salamat sa Diyos sa kanyang pagliligtas. Thank God for righteousness. At salamat sa Diyos sa katwiran. The question is, what are you going to do tonight? Ang tanong, anong gagawin mo ngayong gabi? I made my mind up. I'm going to take the Word of God. Ako ay nagpasya na. Aking hawakan ang salita ng Diyos. And I'm asking God to help me to be brave and to take action in this generation. At tingin ko sa Diyos, ako ay maging matapang at ako ay magpasya sa panahon ito. Listen, idleness and inactivity makes you a habitation of demons. Kaya makinig kang mabuti yung wala kang ginagawa at ikaw ay nababagot, ikaw ay titirahan ng demonyo. Are you bored? Ikaw ba ay nababagot? Then you can overcome it by loving God and loving people. Mapagtatagumpayan mo yan sa pamamagitan ng mahalin mo ang tao, mahalin mo ang Diyos. Pastor Mitchell told the church in Guam. Sinabi ni Pastor Mitchell sa simbahan natin sa Guam. The key to my longevity is to stay engaged. Ang dahil ang susi ng aking mahabang buhay ay lagi akong nakikisangkot. And all the single people got excited. At lahat ng mga binatang Can I get engaged lagi. too? At lahat ng mga binata, oh, natuwa. Pwede rin ba ako no, mag engage not, kind of, not that kind of an age. Hindi yan yung tinutukoy ko. Hindi yan. That means get active. Ibig sabihin mag aktibo That means quit setting down on your blessed assurance. Ibig sabihin yan, tigilan mo na yung kaupo. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, and I close. Mateo, kapitulo 12, sa pagtatapos. Jesus gives us the clearest insight into deliverance. Binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng napakaliwanag na pananaw sa kung paano makakaya. Verse 43, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it. He finds it empty, swept, and put in order. The tapat ang karamal duman na spirito kung sa ilo mabasa tao ay lumalagat sa mga dako ng walang tubig na mahanap ng kapaygan at hindi magasempong kung magkagi sinasabi niya babalik ako sa akin bahay na nilebasan ko pagdating niya ay nasusupungan yung walang laman walis na at nagagayakan. Let me give it to you this way: When they come back, they find the mind the man is idle and empty. Tingnan po natin, nang sila'y bumalik, natagpa nila ang lalaki, ay walang ginagawa at walang laman. Perry Stone wrote a book called Feeding Demons. Si Perry Stone ay sumulat ay isang klat, pagpapakain sa mga demonyo. The power of God brings deliverance, but it takes discipline to stay delivered. Ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos ay nagbibigay ng kalayaan, ngunit kailangan ng disiplina para manatiling malaya. See, this is the reason why homeless people are crazy. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit yung mga taong grasa ay nasisiraan ng bait. It's the reason why they're strange and weird. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit sila'y kakaiba, sila'y kakatwa. Because you have to have purpose. Sapagat sa buhay, kailangan meron kang layunin. Without a vision, the people... Cast off restraint. Kung walang pangit ay na mga tao, walang pagpipigil sa kanilang mga sarili. Mrs. Lee. Si Mrs. Lee. My new hero. Ang kanyang bagong bayani. Ninety-nine years old. Nobenta ng webe anyos. And she's holding up her driver's license. Awak awak parin yah ang kanyang lisensya sa pagmamaneho. By the way, she said my driver's license is good until I'm a hundred. Siya nga pala ang aking lisensya ito ay mab may bisa pa hanggang idad sandaan. Now, I'm not sure how safe that would be. At hindi niya sigurado kung magligtas pa ito magpaniho. I want someone to, to tell me when Mrs. Lee is coming down the road and I'm gonna go to the other road. Gusto niya ang ipaalam sa kanya kung saan dadaan ito si Mrs. Lee at siya'y lilipat ng linya. But the point is, she's still engaged. Ngunit ang punto, ikaw ba ay kabahagi pa rin. Life's too short to be bored. Napakaiksay po ng buhay para ikaw ay mabagot. Oh, my kids, teenagers. Kanya mga anak, mga I'm kabata. bored. Nababagot ako. You know, the way, the way they would say bored, you can almost smell it. Yeah, alam mo yung, I'm bored. Yung pagsasalita nilang nababagot so sila. Nainip ako. A lot of Christians are bored. Maraming Christiano, nainip. Can I help you? Pwede ba tulungan kita? Go grab some flyers in the back. There's some tracks back Mer there Meron tayo mga flyers sa likod. And get back out on the street again where the sinners are. Bumalik ka doon sa lansangat kung nasaan yung, nasa yung mga makasalanan. Get out of that nice little cushion of protection you're under and get back out on the street where sinners are that need to get saved. At lumabas ka mula sa iyong uh, protektadong kinalalagyan at palambot na kinalalagyan 
Pumunta ka doon sa initan at mamigay ka ng mga babasahin doon. Every time we come to church, the pastor shouldn't have to be a cheerleader. Kaya sa tuwing tayo dadalo, hindi po dapat ang pastor ay cheerleader. To lead you out of your depression. Nadaling ka mula, ilayo ka mula sa iyong depression. Come on now, come on. Sige na, sige come na. On. Let's sing. Come on, everybody. Come on. Everybody, everybody, everybody happy? Come on. Masaya na ba, no? No, you ought to be ready when you come to church. Yeah, dapat handa ka pagdating mo palang sa simbaha. We shouldn't have to wait for the syncopated sound of a Hammond organ to start before we start praising God. Hindi natin kailang intayin pa ang mga instrumento bago tayo magpuri sa Diyos. We intentionally atin pong sinasadya every once in a while on a Sunday night have a church fellowship. Sinasadya po nila minsan sa pagkatapos ng linggo ng gabi meron silang fellowship. And one of the reasons why we have fellowship is to get you to talk to people that you don't normally talk to. At ang isa pong dahilan kung bakit lang ginagawa na ito para kausapin mo yung mga taong hindi mo nakakausap palagi. But true to form, some will run as fast as they can out the front door. Ngunit ayon nga sa tunay na kanyuan, marami pagkatapos sa pagkatapos at mamadali na sa pintuan. They come in late and they leave early. Huli nang tumating, maaga pang aalis. You know why? Because they are socially retarded. Alam niyo kung bakit? Sapagkat sila ay mga taong ayaw nakikipakisalamuha. And if you do stay, you only fellowship with people of your race and your culture. Ano naman ay manatili, ang ginakausap mo lang yung iyong kalahe, yung iyong kababayan. We have 17 different cultures in our church. We have the Tagalog Club and the Cebuano Club. And the Tamoro Club and the Marshallese Club and then the Palawan Club and then the White Club. Pero sila labing pitong grupo. Grupo ng mga Tagalog, grupo ng mga Cebuano, grupo ng mga ano pa, Marseilles, grupo ng mga whatever. I told the people of Guam, who told you you're not going to have a white Christmas? At sinasabi niya sa mga mana ng palada doon, sino may sabi sa hindi ka magkakaroon ng puting Christmas? And all the white guys got together at the last Christmas fellowship, and we sang, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I want to tell you that God is colorblind. Sometimes we need to learn to fellowship with people who are not just like us. I've always been the minority in every church I've ever pastored. I was reading about a man tragically that was killed and I closed. Sam's Club in California. Sam's Club sa California. Very sad. He was mentally challenged and he was killed. And the newspaper said the reason why he was killed is because he was non-verbal. At ayon po sa balita, dahil lang kung bakit siya pinatay, dahil hindi po siya nakikipag-usap. In other words, to be non-verbal is a malady of the retarded. Ibig sabihin, yung hindi ka nakipag-usap, yan po'y sakit na may problema sa pag-iisip. Handicap people. Yung mga may kapansanan ba? Island churches. Mga simbahan sa mga isla. You walk through the door of the church and everyone turns to look. Pagpasok mo lang sa simbahan, yung mga lahat ng tao nakatingin. And they'll stare at you from a distance. At titignan ka lang sa malayo. They're just looking at you. Nakatingin lang. Non-verbal. Tawag doon, hindi nakikipag-usap. No one's talking. Wala nagsasalita. Just staring. Nakatingin lang. Oh, look how big and white he is. Oh, tingnan mo kung gano'ng kalaki at taba, oh. We ought to learn how to communicate. Pag-aralan po natin makipag-ugnayan. Engage the human race. Throw your stupid telephone away. Tapon mo ang iyong telepono. Makipag-usap ka sa katabi mo. Get off of Facebook and talk to real people. Ibayo ka sa Facebook. Kausapin mo yung totoong tao. I have 62 likes. Ano na po tayo ba? And you listen to these people, they've got 5,000 friends. You're so deceived. You may have two or three friends your whole life. 
At totoo yan, baka nga dalo at tatlo lang ang tunay mong kaibigan. I have lots of associates. Marami tayong mga kasama. But I've got a handful of friends. Pero marami naman tayong mga kaibigan. And the greatest friend is Jesus tonight. At ang pinakatakila kaibigan walang mabawa si Jesus. Can we bow our heads together tonight? Nagupo natin ating mga...